IntelliCubic training video tutorial number one. First step is the user interface for IntelliCubic. Across the top, you have your zoom functions with the little eyeglass piece and your ISO view and side views. So all your views and zooming is across the top of the screen. Across the bottom, in the, uh, the lower left, you're going to get uh, your error comments, not error comments, you're going to get your messages here displayed for you looking for input information. It's going to have your questions, like if it's asking for an X and Y, that's going to show up in here. Over on the right side of the screen is your X and Y, where the mouse is presently uh, on, the, on the display, your X and Y axis. Uh, this is the desktop version, so I have an inch function here. I'm in inch mode, and I have my grid mode on too. Now, first thing you want to look at is on your settings, you want to go into this settings menu here, and there is some options in here which you may want to configure. So uh, this is the desktop version, so some of these uh, choices in here may not be on the machine version. But here's our grid spacing for our Snap2 grid if we're going to use this as a grid. And uh, let's, say what's on, let's see what's under your tolerance functions. So in here, if I remember right, your, your general items you may want to uh, consider looking at. These are your, when you bring in a file, like a DXF file, you might have gaps or such. So this is your uh, information for how big uh, it's going to allow to make a chain around a shape to determine if it's a closed shape type of a thing. So you have some settings in here which you may have to review. Uh, I'll just close this for now. I think this distance one here at the top, you might have to set that one a little bit bigger to a tenth maybe, one or two tenths. So let's go ahead and I'll change that right now. We'll put that, we'll put it at a tenth. And the only other setting is in for your colors here and display. So I just tend to leave everything as the user defaults. I, mean, I guess you could change some things if you don't like the colors. So across the bottom, then you have your file page. This is to open up an IntelliCubic file. You cannot go here and open anything other than an IntelliCubic file, one that you've, a model or that you've imported and then saved in the system, then you can reopen that one that you've presently been working or previously have been working on. If it's a brand new import file, DXF or Parasolid, no, you don't go to file page to do that. I'll show you that later. So in file, obviously you can open one. Let's show you that. And you can open, see here, file type. It only allows you to open IntelliCubic IQ files. Not uh, a, a CAD file of any type. So I already have one here. And then you could click on it and open it. So there's that. If I wanted to like have a file and I want to just erase what's there to start fresh, that's where the new is. File new. That'll get rid of whatever's on the screen. And then, of course, you have save. So if you had started one and you want to exit off the programming page to resume it at a later date, later time, make sure and save your work. You would go here and save it. Saves it as an IQ file. So let's open that uh, app, that number one IQ file. So we have one on the screen now. So now I can show you a little bit about the toolbars across the top. So you have your ISO view button. 
This is your front view button, the back view, left side, right side, and so forth. So you have those views. You can turn off the solid and make it just look like a wireframe or a hollow. So usually we just leave it on the solid. And then you have your zoom functions across the top here. So the wheel of the mouse, I'm just turning the wheel of the mouse now. So that's your zoom. And then also holding in the wheel of the mouse is your free spin, this button right here. You can use that button at the top or use the wheel on your mouse. If you want to zoom in a particular spot, you have a zoom in icon and then you can zoom in by holding the mouse down and zoom up on a certain area by drawing a window. Let's go back to the... You can click on your on your part and it zooms up on that. So if you want to use these functions, you got your fit. That will, anything is on the screen that'll fit. And then these are your undo, redo buttons. So if you do a function and you don't like what you did, you can hit that and go back. These other buttons across the top, really, I, I haven't seen much purpose for using these. Uh, uh, that's At this point, I just really haven't found a good use for those. Here it's showing you your X, Y... You know, this is your origin right now in this part. So where all these lines come together, that's your 0, 0, X, Y, Z, 0, 0. And it's showing you a little icon down here for your X, X axis and Y axis to know, to, so you can see which direction you're going. So that's your basic user interface. Uh, there's some functions across the bottom that you use which uh, I guess I should go over those a little bit. you got your model page. This is where you would go to bring in or import a, a parasolid, uh, which could be the XT format or the XB format, either one, or you can import a 2D DXF file. And then once you do import them, you can adjust the placement of the, the model or the DXF file, or move the origin point with this function at the bottom. So that's on your model screen. So we notice now over on this left side, I've got this information window. So now that once I've turned that on, one of these functions across the bottom, this kind of stays on the screen from now. Now there's a close button, but you kind of really don't need to close those. They'll just switch from whatever screen you go into. If you're in model screen, it'll be in the function to do that. If you're in the stock screen, it, it changes to, to that one. Or if you're in feature recognition, it switches to that one. So this manager, let's call it over on the left, kind of always stays up on there. You kind of really don't need to close it. So we'll just leave it open for now. So more, normally what, the way this works is you're going to import your model, and then you move over to feature recognition. We don't really use the stock function at all. It's not, I don't think it's really necessary. There could be some good use for it, but we're going to skip over that. So you basically go from importing the model to your feature recognition, and then what this function is, is, is that it looks at the model to determine everything that it could wire, off, wire on the part by you set whether to do look at the whole shape or just to look for all the die shape cuts or all the which would be your inside cuts and all the or the punch shape cuts. Uh, so I'll go over how you use this function in a little bit. So that's feature recognition. So you have a couple of choices on this menu. You create one, and once you have one created, you have some functions here. Once you have one created, you can use these other choices here, maybe to delete it, or you have some other functions that you could use to affect that contour. Uh, Next step here is machining path, or the next choice, I should say, is machining path. And this is where you go to create your tool path. 
So after you make your feature recognition, we do need to have start holes before we move on to machining path. Uh, but it's in, I'm just going across the bottom in the order that they show them here. But there would be uh, a step where we need to have the start holes before we move on to machining path. But let's look at machining path. You have some choices here, path generation. Once you have a, a tool path, then you can make a modification to it or delete them or copy them. So, path generate. So the menu on the manager side looks like this. Once you have your tool path made, then the next step is to go to NC conversion. And in here you would convert to basically use this convert to NC button. And up pops this new menu. And you can put in your NC file name and then you hit that convert button that's kind of grayed out right now. Right here is that convert button. So you put your name in here, what you want the program to be called, and hit that convert button. Now there are some convert parameters we want to look at. So uh, let's do that because I like to set this up beforehand. Or I got to make a program. We'll look at that later. So let me close that out. Now, another choice across the bottom is your 2D drawing. So this is where you go to create start holes or to create a 2D drawing. So if you're going to create the geometry in the system, you use 2D drawing, uh, which we're not going to go over right now. So the main thing to realize, though, is we need starting holes. So what is a starting hole versus a circle? So you can have a circle on the screen, but those are not considered starting holes. That could be maybe a geometry of the shape that you want to cut. So we want to have start holes for the software to recognize. If you make a start hole, the software can see that start hole, and it can automatically find that start hole and lead on to your shape to be cut. So that's why we have start holes. It comes in real handy when you're doing multiple shapes in one block that makes it simpler to use the automatic generation for the tool path. That way you don't have to select your start holes on the on each individual pocket. It'll it'll find the nearest start hole. So that's what that's for. So when you want to put a start hole on your shape, you turn this function on and you would enter in the X and Y coordinates where you want to be. So I'll do that real quick so you can see. I have the shape here, 0, 0. We're in inch mode, so we're going to put it at Y minus like a half inch. And I'll say new. And you see it drew a little tiny white start hole right there at Y minus a half inch. This little piece right here. So now that's a start hole. So we need that. So anyway, we'll, we'll go over a little bit more how you can use this function here. But if you have multiple start holes in your, your circles in your shape, the, the, where this advanced feature in for finding them all is this start hole search. This allows the system to have any circles that you drew on your screen at a certain size. Let's say you make your little circles 10 thousandths because you're not going to wire a 10 thousandths hole. So you pick a size that you would never wire. And then you could enter this as the max diameter of 10 thousandths. And then it would look at your entire solid for any circle that size and convert the circles into start holes in one quick step. Now 2D drawing, if you go into this function here, this turns on the tooling, or the drawing palette where you can draw circles and lines uh, and things like that, circles, lines, uh, you can remove elements and stuff like this. So there's a lot of choices inside this menu, but the main thing you need to remember is to get out of this mode, you hit this blue button. That will back you up, and now you're out of the drawing mode. So the system has a drawing mode, and they call it, it doesn't have a 3D drawing mode, it's just 2D drawing, and if you get into this function, you have to use that blue button to get yourself out. 
So you would, what you would typically do is draw your shapes or your whatever you need. And then when you are done, you hit that blue button to go back. And then you would continue on with your programming of the shape to make a tool path for the machine. So that's very important. If you get into this mode, use that blue button to cancel. It saves the drawing that you just did and gets you off of the screen and back into the programming screen. So that's the geometry creation side of it and then back to the programming side of it. So there's like the software has two modes. Okay. And then the last function across the bottom is your measurement. So this allows you to check elements for their size with attribute. You can turn attribute on and then you can see you can select different things. So I'll select this little red line right here in the corner at zero zero and it'll give you the, some information about this element that you just clicked on and then I could click on a different element let's say this red one this one in y direction so it gives me the length almost four inch length okay so that's that's giving you a, a way to check the size of this attribute and then there's also a distance function that allows you to be that allows you to check uh, from one element to another element, and then you can say measure, and it'll give you some information about it. It does not have a system that where you can put like dimension lines on your part. It is just for checking dimensions of your part. So you can't really use this software to make a dimensioned print or something that you could print off on paper. That's not the purpose of this software. This is mainly to just import a file and create the wire program. So that's your tutorial one, the user interface for IntelliCubic.